Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is longest common subsequence and it is a medium level problem. So this problem is a very standard DP on strings problem. So we are going to discuss how we can solve this problem and in case you are struggling with forming iterative DP, then this video will definitely be helpful for you because we are first going to discuss the recursive or the memorization approach and then we will try to convert it into iterative DP, right? So in case you want to learn LCS or in case you're struggling with specifically iterative DP, then you can watch this video and you'll be able to understand both of the things. So the problem statement is very simple. It says that we have been given two strings and we have to find the length of the longest common subsequence present in both of them, right? And the string that has been given to us is in uppercase characters. So there's not much for discussion for this particular problem. But let me just quickly explain you what do we mean by a longest common subsequence. So you see that we have been given two strings like these, right? So what is the longest common subsequence among it? You see that we have A here. So A is also here. So one length is confirmed. Then the next character that is seen in both of them is this D, right? So this D is also a part of the longest common subsequence and the next character at the same is H, right? So the longest common subsequence is A, D and H which is of length 3. So the key idea is you have to take any subsequence from these strings. Subsequence means you can take any of the characters while skipping some of those. The only thing is the order should be the same and common means obviously that A, D, H is common in both of them, right? So this is the whole problem. Now. This will be solved with dp and let me first define the states for dp of ij. So dp of ij, let's say dp of ij means, I'm just going to type it. So the first thing is that we need to talk about the ith index, right? So we are currently at the ith in index of string 1, let's say, right? And J means we are at, we are currently at Jth index of string 2, right? So let's say this is what i and j are representing and dp of ij is going to represent, it shows length of the longest common subsequence of strings s1 ending at i and s2 ending at j right so what do we mean by this thus dp of ij is going to show us the length of the longest common subsequence of strings let's say we have a pause here s1 ending at i and s2 ending at j so let's say this is a b c d g and h and let's say we have a e d f h and r let's say both of them let's say these are in one base indexing so it is one two three four five six right and let's say if we talk about zero comma zero right so what is the length of the longest common subsequence when both of them end at zero since we don't have any characters that is why lcs will be equal to zero right now if I talk about dp of 1, 1, right, both of them are ending at index 1. That means this particular position, right. So you see till now both of them have only one character in common. So the value of dp of 1, 1 is going to be 1, right. Now let us see a couple of more examples. Let's say the next character was d, right. So if I take this one, if I take dp of 3, 3, Right, that means the string 1 is ending at index 3 as well as the string 2 is ending at index 3, right. So in this particular case, the answer will still be 1. Why? Because there is only one common character till now, that is A. Now, if I change the scenario a little bit, if I write dp of 4, 3, then you will see that the LCS will be equal to 2. Because now A and D both have occurred in both of the strings. Right, because for string 1, we are considering till index 4. 
for string 2 we are considering the index 3. So now our final answer, our final answer is going to be stored in dp of n comma m where n is the length of the string 1 and m is the length of the string 2. Since these are the last position in string 1 and string 2 respectively that is why the final answer is going to be stored in dp of n comma m. So till now we have discussed what are the dp states, what is dp of ij denoting. Now the next thing is how do we make the transitions. So let us talk about the transitions. Let us say s1 of i is equals to s2 of j that means the character at index i is equals to the character at index j. So we can set dp of ij is equals to 1 plus dp of i minus 1 and j minus 1. Why? Because if both the characters are same then this character is going to contribute to my longest common subsequence, right? That is why I have a one here. Now, if I take this particular character in my LCS, remaining strings will get its length reduced by one because I have taken one character out of them. So, if the length of the first string gets reduced by one, then its index or ending index will be i minus one. Similarly, for j, it will be j minus one, right? So, that is why I write it like this. So, if this condition is true, I will say dp of ij as 1 plus dp of i minus 1, j minus 1. Otherwise, what I am going to do, if it is not same, then I still have to set my dp of ij, right. But in this case, I am going to take the maximum of something and this maximum will be, there, there are two ways or there are two possibilities with me now, right. So, for example, if I have some string like this a, b, c, d and let us say I have another string a, c, b, e right so if i am at this particular index at the last index i see that both of the characters are not common right so one way of approaching forward is to move this pointer to the left right or the ith pointer to the left or converting i into i minus 1 right you can say it any of the ways it is all same or the other way could have been moving this pointer to the left or the j pointer to the left or converting j into j minus 1 Right. So, we are just going to do nothing. We are just going to explore both of the ways. I am just going to write dp of i minus 1j comma dp of i j minus 1. Right. So, this is the beauty of recursion or dynamic programming. Both of them work on the similar principle that you do not need to think about anything. You can just explore all the paths and it will automatically calculate the answer for you. So, these are the two transitions that we need to take care of, right, these are the transitions. Now, let us talk about the base case, let us talk about the base case, when any one of them, if i is equal to 0 or j is equal to 0, that means here our answer will be equal to 0. Why is it so? Because if one of the strings has been exhausted or there are no other characters left in either of the strings, then in that case answer is definitely going to be 0 because there cannot be anything common. If one of the string is empty then there cannot be anything common that is why even if one of them becomes 0 the answer will be 0, right. So now let us have a look at the recursive or the memoization approach. Then we will try to convert that particular approach into our iterative dp, right. So let us quickly start here. So I am just going to write pseudo code, I am not going to write the exact code but it will be much similar to the exact code. Right. So, let us say we have some helper function here. Right. Now, inside this helper function, first of all, I will have some base cases. If i is equal to is equal to 0 or j is equal to is equal to 0, then I am just going to return 0 from here. Right. Now, if, if dp of ij is not equal to minus 1, then I am just going to return dp of ij. So, why am I doing this? If you have done memoization or recursive dp before, then you already know then I initialize all of my dp array with some value which can never be my answer. So that I know that I have not calculated this value before and in this case I can use minus 1 since the length cannot be less than 0, right. So I use minus 1 to indicate that I have not calculated this answer before. But if it is not equal to minus 1 that means I have already calculated this answer before and then in that case I can just directly return dp of ij, right. 
and now the next step what i do i check if s1 of i is equal to equal to s2 of j then i can just return dp of ij is equal to 1 plus helper of i minus 1 and j minus 1 right and obviously i will receive two integers here here int i comma int j right now in the next step what i do if this is not true if this is not true i will just have an else condition else return dp of ij is equal to max of helper of i minus 1 j comma helper of i j minus 1 right so this is my whole code for my recursive approach right so you don't need to do anything and at the end you can just call your answer on helper of helper of n comma m right you can just return it and this will be a final solution it means write it here right so you can return helper of n comma m because this this is where you are going to start from why is this helper of n comma m why are we starting with n comma m because we are traversing from the right to the left you could have also done it the other way traversing from the left to the right it's just that whichever way you take you just have to be consistent among them right since i was traversing from the right here then i have set up a base condition for zero right if you are traversing from the left here you have to set a base condition equal to the length of the strings so yeah, you can take any of the methods either of them is correct but it's just that you have to be consistent among them right if you are traversing from left to right you will also have to change all of these minus ones to plus ones but if you don't want it you can just also follow this method as well it is equally correct right now let us have a look at the iterative approach right so what i am going to do is you will see that it is very very easy to convert this recursive dp to iterative dp so first of all i am just going to write two for loops i am not going to talk about the contents of these for loops for now i am just going to write for right for int i that means i have a variable i here right i am not writing anything inside it i am just writing that i have a variable i here right so let's say i have this then i don't have to do anything if if s1 of i is equal to equal to s2 of j then what i do i set my dp of ij is equal to 1 plus dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 you see the only difference till now here was in the recursive approach i was setting dp of ij as 1 plus helper of i minus 1 j minus 1 right so this time i don't have any helper function i just have my dp array itself so i'm just going to use it right and now what i do i write else dp of ij is equal to max of dp of i minus 1 j comma dp of i j minus 1 right so this is all you had to do right now you see till now the only difference is earlier you were calling the helper function now we are just going to use the dp array and also in the uh, memorization approach we were returning something right because we have to calculate the answer and return the answer to the function which has called my current function right but now here i don't have to return anything now comes the very very important part which is very crucial in most of the iterative dp problems now you have seen that you are setting something here right that means dp of ij depends remember this word dp of ij depends on dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 right so i is depending on i minus 1 and j is depending on j minus 1 similarly if you check the dependencies here you will see dp of ij is depending on dp of i minus 1 comma j and dp of i j minus 1 right so this part is very 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 important right why because for forming the for loops here at the top you will have to first see what are the dependencies inside your logic right that is why it is called bottom up approach because first you will be calculating some smaller values and then you will be using them to form the bigger values but in order to know what are those smaller values you will have to check your dependencies and on the base of those dependencies you will have to form your for loops so first of all you will see that dp of ij is depending on dp of i j minus 1 so for the same i for the same i you will have to calculate j minus 1 first 
right so let me just write it here you will have to write j is starting from let's say 1 for one based indexing and j is less than equal to m and j plus plus and remember one thing if you write the j loop outside then also it is not going to work because for the same i for the same i you have to calculate j minus 1 first and if you write the j loop outside this will not be the case right now similarly you have to calculate i minus 1 before calculating i right because the answer of dp of i is depending on dp of i minus 1 that is why here also i is equal to 1 i i is less than equal to n and i plus plus this is the only thing you have to do right you see that conversion from this recursive dp to iterative dp is not very difficult the key difference is to note here is that you don't have any helper function so you have to use the dp array right now you don't have to return anything and the third thing is you have to observe your dependencies and then based on those dependencies you have to write your for loops right so it's not a problem if you don't write the for loops beforehand you can just leave them like a dummy and then first write your core dp logic after writing it you can just write the for loops right so this is how you can convert your recursive approach to iterative approach right so that was all about today's problem of the day now let us quickly have a look at the final code so you see what i've done is i've created a double dimensional vector called dp of size n plus 1 and size m plus 1 and all of the values are initialized with 0 so the only reason i'm creating a double dimensional vector of size n plus 1 and m plus 1 is because if i have of size or exactly n and m then i will have to include a separate base condition for the index 0 or the first index of the string right so this is very important while writing iterative dp that is why i just directly create n plus 1 and m plus 1 and i'm assuming the string to be in one base indexing right but it will also cause some other problems because i'm assuming it to be one base but actually it is zero base right so let us see how we can fix this later so here you will see that uh, this is uh, just a simple for loop right i is starting from 1 till less than n plus 1 similarly j starting from 1 till less than m plus 1 and inside it you see i have written s1 of i minus 1 why is it like this because i'm assuming it to be one base but it is actually zero base string right so that is why it is like this so one way of uh, avoiding so one other way of correcting this is also like this you can write s1 is equals to question mark or any other random character plus s1 right so this will make the string one base indexing right this is also correct but if you don't want to do this you can always write minus one here right similarly for s2 if those two characters are equal i just said dp of ij as one plus dp of i minus one j minus one and in the other case dp of ij will be equal to max of dp of i minus one j and dp of i j minus one and at the end you can just directly return dp of n comma m and this would be your final solution so let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works so you see it passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems so i see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet in case you're one of them then definitely consider subscribing it's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later so share the channel with your friends until the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye